Welcome, come on in. Thank you. This is uh, the continuation of our game development, uh, but we're starting in the future because I'm going to take you back over the past three months of game dev because we work on it sort of every week and Rob and I work on it once a month. So this is usually the, the once a month things over the last three. We're climbing the stairs. I have to. Going up, going up the stairs. Anyways, <laughs> let's take you back through the last few months of game dev. We're finished. Okay. The game. And the game's out? Yeah. Well, apps. Yeah. Every, everywhere to purchase. Yep. Yep. Cool. Is that easy? Good job, guys. Bye. No worries. We have years to go on this project, but that's a good start. We're two months in. I think there's a bit of a language of color going on here. The plainer ones with the plain black environments, if you scroll up, are items. So mm -hmm. it's like a really simple gradient vignette to black. The stuff with much more wispy, smoky stuff are usually abilities, and there's color codes for factions. Originally, she had this gold color for Alpha, and it was it was this brownie color for um, Corpus. Corpus, but I told her to go more orange. The little flavor on this item is basically, it's sometimes uh, in, a, in a harsh environment where you have to do everything to survive. It isn't only your ancestors' wisdom, but their pelt that protects you. No, that's cool. So it's the idea of like some bear creature that yeah. is literally wearing their ancestors as like a, a root of tradition where they will, when they die, they expect they will be fully used as well. Their bodies will yeah. not be burnt on a pyre. Instead, you like make their fur into a coats and rugs and I love that. So that every, is every literally... card you pull in this game, there's a story behind. I've been here up here while you've been doing some other work in the office. Um, Rob's morale, not high. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check him. Let's raise some morale, shall we? Yeah. Hey, Rob. hey Rob! You're doing great, buddy. I can't hear anything. Oh, what is that? He's blasting something. Yeah, it's not good for your ears, Rob. Ear bites are really bad for your ears. What? <laughs> The skit should be, do you want to see what I've done so far? Yeah. And you just censor the whole thing and garble out voices. Yeah, yeah, Dave, do you want to see what I've done so far? I dream of doing what you've done so far. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Can I just f say it's a f No, they do f and perfectly I accidentally pinged Caroline. I'm having my lunch while Rob's showing me what he's working on. I've got a temporary user interface that it's not the final version of the game that we're working on, but we all don't want to look at, no offense, code art oh, anymore. No <laughs> offense taken. Code art is never fun, but it's a necessary part of the journey, but it's fun to get away from as soon as possible. So this is what we got so far. Does this give too much away, Dave? Dave's not here, so he can't temp temper my impulses. So you can oh. see Alicia's art in there. It's coming together. It's coming together. It's starting yep. to look pretty cool. This is our first ha character sculpture. This is Angus, by the way. Angus is helping us out. Scrap is our first character. So pink needs to rotate under. At the moment, we've got a bit of a, a side on. We so need to go pink or pinky. P so pink. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's confusing yeah. when you're talking about fingers. Yep. Then in and down. Yep. Okay. And then. Yep. When it's 3D printed, it'll be this big. So this is the first character that we're making, and that's what you're seeing us work so on. Um, and this is the early concept that we did with Alicia. Meanwhile, Alicia's also working on this. Oh, actually, that's another preview. This is the current concept we're refining. So as you can see, there isn't a cohesive world or design style or flavor. There's a bit of a mix, and there's a reason for that. I'm not going to reveal stuff, but actually it's the wild variations in the characters that'll be the fun part. And it's going to be really fun to see Scrap, this is like a little dude, and they Very will be, scrap. they're evenly paired. <laughs> they're, they're an even fight. Isn't that funny? Totally. Yeah. He's not even that tall, he's like standing yeah. on rubble yeah, as he's well. Like, he's, he's on like his tippy toes shorter. on a box, and he's like, I love that, that's so fun. My reference cleaver. <laughs> Because I can't like we can't go through the modeling process without seeing no, I think that's how the fingers cool. splay, and then also it's not like an even like when you're naturally like the poses. So you sort of need to pull into the pose that we're creating to see yeah. how things position. This is why I like game. Yeah, it's game. Very Isn't exciting. that fun? <laughs> Cut to Rob, who's like crazy. <laughs> he's in his zone. This is him all day. He's got such a headache, and he's like, his brain is mashed potato. So let's rotate the knife further up. Like. That. Yep, and then pull it up higher. That's it. Yeah, and then that uh, middle finger can come yeah. out further, and then the the pointer can really come out. Hey. 
tattooing now? I think it's cool. It's like it's so, it's It feels more like a giant mech hand rather than a human sized robot. He's still like idea. it's a Gundam hand. Like he's, he's wearing boots too big yeah. for him, he's wearing a helmet too big for him, and that is not a normal glove. No. I want to paint that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he feels less like an underdog compared to that big guy we showed before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes more sense that they're yeah. evenly paired because he's got a, a fist the size of his whole torso yeah. and it's got rocket boosters on the back. Yeah. So this is our first proper play test. We've done little little bitsy play tests. Okay, so these are our gates. I think I solved the problem and I love it. What? So card games have an issue with how many copies of a card can you put in your deck, right? Mm -hmm. The solution is one. You can only ever put one copy of a card in your deck. But you have three cards. Yeah. So the, if you go corpus and you want a corpus <laughs> unique card and you put it in all three of the decks, you can have three. Yeah. We don't actually have characters and stats and stuff. Like we're just yeah. we're just trying to get by at this point. We're just trying to figure out how the game works. We'll figure out the stuff later. It's like, they always put stupid pictures of me and shit. It's a placeholder until you God. select one. Otherwise, it's a white square. And Every time. <laughs> Let me just. I'm just going to show you the coder art that I saw for years and years and years working on games with Matt. Uh, it's his artwork of me as a muscle man flexing my pecs, topless, and it's very. <laughs> it's just a lot. <laughs> This, this frustrating, you, the frustrating part about playing, but developing a game where Dave's involved is he owns a hobby shop and he's really good at playing games. Well, I also so you're just going to beat me every round I? and I'm going to be like, you know, the game's broken. It's not, it doesn't work, guys. <laughs> There's so much stuff we need to do. For example, I think at the very start of the game, you should draw like five cards and discard down to two. So you have some option because you, you literally drew the only two utility teleports in your whole deck on the first turn. I drew two inc incredibly aggressive combat cards. Yes. So now it's get, we're back to the present or where we started and it's another game dev Friday where all of us are in on it, but this is a special one because it's our last one to make a prototype. After today, we're moving on to something else. I'll allude to that later. Uh, we have another three and a half hours to finish the prototype. Everyone ready? <laughs> yeah. But we're gonna pick up from here. Uh, we're gonna do another game dev vlog that'll come out in a couple of weeks time to show the, f the process of this final crunch and why this is the last day. I'll sort of explain a bit more about that. But uh, let's, let's wrap this one up with a question. How much experience do each of the team members have a game dev and how is it for someone that has never done it before? Great, all right, I'll start us off and then we can go one by one. Yeah. Uh, I was a Flash game developer. I started when I was 17. I started as an animator and then I found coders that I could collaborate with and for about eight years, I made, made Flash games eventually professionally. I actually got my first mortgage and car based on making Flash games. So that's my main game dev experience. But I like making games more than I understand like the rules of how to pick up games. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm better at making than playing. I have zero experience. Uh, doing game dev. I studied uh, animation focusing more on film and TV. It's a bit daunting but it helps when I'm surrounded by so many other creative people to like come up with ideas and then I just have to draw them so I don't have yeah. to like come up with anything myself which is nice. I dabble in making stupid games in my free time uh, and I released an app with Jazza. You have a few actual little game prototypes that are pretty Hilarious, like the don't shit your pants game. Poodoo. 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 Yeah. This was t it was taco day in the office, and yeah. unfortunately it didn't end well. So yeah. you have to sneak from the toilet to the storeroom to get more toilet paper because you sat down without checking. So you have to avoid your colleagues in the office. And the further you walk, the more the pressure builds, and then like you just got to not get noticed. But you can speed up by taking coffee at the risk of increasing the pressure. <laughs> That's so cruel. I studied game dev at uni and. I then basically opened a game store. So I haven't developed a game myself, 
but I've spent seven years playing every game under the sun, as well as making a whole bunch of homebrew campaigns, narratives, all, all kinds of, always, I'm always writing my own stuff and incorporating it. And I get to do the wordsy and rightsy number stuff, so I'm glad I'm not coding anything because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so that's where we're leaving this one off, but we have more game dev to do, so we'll pick up in another vlog and take you into the journey of the, the crunch of the prototype and explain where we're going from here. <laughs>